Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow 33 bringing you a replay of Akron between Elliot N and Arctic Vanguard. Elliot N is blue player on the west side of the map, and Arctic Vanguard is the Brecken player in yellow on the east side of the map. So, both players are playing on Felsing Inferno, which is a map we've seen before, and Elliot N is playing Vekir. So, Elliot N is actually about 15 seconds down from Arctic Vanguard. Arctic Vanguard has decided to go up to the present. He's Fast forward up a bit, and he's also moving his Arcticus as we've seen before. This is, once again, a fairly common strategy, it seems, among Grecum. Fairly common opening. So, Arctic Vanguard setting up his economy fairly quickly, and Elliot N also, about the same time, is setting up his economy. He has all of his RPs set up, so six RPs, and Zion Beer as well is hanging out there. Teth Beer going out to scout, while Arctic Vanguard has his three RPs for four RPs now. So, I'll have seven RPs total once these Octos start building up. Six on Liquid Crystal and one on Q-Plasma, and actually two on Q-Plasma, so it looks like Arctic Vanguard is going for a rather tech-heavy build, not particularly rush-heavy, while Elliot N, on the other hand, is going for also tech, from the looks of it. He's getting another QPRP, and he's built another Zionveer, so he has two Zionveers. One Zionveer looks like it's going up to the center of the map, so it's going up to the top center of the map to try to expand a bit more. Arctic Vanguard, on the other hand, about five seconds up from here. He has an Octo sent out. Looks like it's going to be sent out to Scout, but it's hard. Yes, he is sending it out to Scout, while the Arcticus is actually hasn't been moved up as much as I thought it would be. It just moved up slightly, so it's a bit of a forward Scout, but otherwise not doing much. He has a Seppi set up, so Seppi is coming out to build a Reef, and he actually has quite a bit of resources up as well, while Elliot N is built a Depot. He actually built a rather quick Depot. He has all of his... So he has his... Freezes processors is about okay. Now he's jumped ahead about 15 seconds, but just double check his scout. So he sees that Elliot N. Sorry, Elliot N. Sees that Arctic Vanguard is playing Reckon, and at the same time he's going back just to double check. He does have, or he will have a depot soon. It looks like. Well, that's kind of, here we are. So here's the depot. So he has a depot putting the Zion Gear into a Zion Pulsar. So he has a Zion Pulsar up quickly, and like I said, he is getting high high tech. He's getting three QPRPs, six LCRPs. While Arctic Vanguard, on the other hand, at about 10 seconds or five seconds before him is also going to have protect. Like I said, he's getting his Reef up, he's getting two more QPRPs, so he has four QPRPs and six LCRPs. Getting a Faro as well for Spire once he gets advanced structures, which will be very quickly. Or more than likely very quickly, as soon as he realizes he actually has his Reef done. Looks like he's probably paying attention to the Octo. The Reef should be done fairly soon, so once that's done, he'll be able to... There we go, advanced structures, just as I expected. And, as well, the Octo has seen Arctic Vanguard, sir, so... Arctic Vanguard knows Elliot N is, Elliot N knows what Arctic Vanguard is, both players have skated each other pretty well, and Elliot N has continued to build some Zion, wow, he's built a lot of Zion Pulsers, he's going heavy on Zion Pulsers, completely obliterating any scouts that Arctic Vanguard might send at him. So Elliot N has gone for a very unit-focused build, like I said, a bit of quick tech for the depot, but otherwise very unit-focused, he's also jumped back a couple minutes, so he's coming us down, actually, 15 seconds down from there, so at this point he's about a minute and a half down from Arctic Vanguard. Arctic Vanguard's actually jumped ahead as well, but a minute and a half, so they're about three minutes apart. Two minutes apart now, Arctic Vanguard jumped back slightly. So both players just checking out, see what they have, because Arctic Vanguard needs to make sure he has a Spire as soon as he can. Getting some more Octus as well, all for resource processor, so he's getting a lot of economy, but he hasn't really set, set it up to build anything. He does have a Spire coming out, so I imagine Pharapods will be coming out very quickly, or Sephipods, but probably Pharapods, they're very, very common for a unit. Elliot N has continued to build some Zion Pulsers. He's got five Zion Pulsers now, two Zion Churchers also coming up. So he's getting a lot of anti-ground units, which is rather unfortunate because Arctic Vanguard, because they're about the same time, and Arctic Vanguard has really been focusing on his air units. So you see, yeah, two Sephipods, two Pharapods, some more Octus coming up for resource processors, but really... Oh, and a dome as well. But really, two Pharapods, two Sephipods against a bunch of Zion class units is not going to work very well. Or Zion type units, I should say, is not going to work very well. So, let me, it's a lot of Zion pulses and Zion churches. It'll be able to get through the base very effectively, but the Pharapods and Sephipods will be able to damage it without getting retaliated. So, while Elliot N can deal a lot of damage to the Grecum base of Arctic Vanguard, Arctic Vanguard will be able to destroy the forces before they even get there, provided he's aware of it and he actually goes for a forward attack. Elliot, however, is staying a minute back, so he is losing a bit of initiative as far as tech goes, but I don't think Arctic Vanguard has actually researched anything related to chronoporting yet. No, he has not. So Arctic Vanguard has not gotten chronoporting yet. He has a Septipod sent out to scout out about a minute up from Elliot N, but Elliot N was also hanging out, and back when Elliot N is, King John the Sixth is also one of the observers, 
set up where Elliot is. He sees a lot of observers as well, but don't worry about them. So for Arctic Vanguard, he is... When Elian is going to be attacking, he has his heavy pods going out to scout, and he has his far pods in the base to help defend, but of course his Arcticus is down here, so it'll be really easy to hit. So the Zion Zion units are all coming in. Elian is building up a couple more foundations as well. Back at his point in time, or back actually, sir, back at Elian's point in time, he isn't focusing on the attack right now, he's just focusing, double checking for production, double checking for the foundation. I'm surprised he doesn't have an aerial control center, because he has the money for it, and he really should get it. I mean, yes, he is building a lot of Zion type units, but that's still, no aerial control center is still a bad idea because, of course, Grekum is very well known for going air and it's kind of hard to counter Grekum air without air units yourself at this point. Hopefully that'll be fixed up a bit in later versions, but at this point, the best way of countering Grekum air is to get some test church, uh, for Vekir, is to get test churchers because they do a really good job. Well, test churchers and shin churchers, shin churchers should be detecting the Farapaws and test churchers because they're anti-air units. However, None of the players have seen attack yet. Here we are. So, Arctic Vanguard sees attack coming in. Actually, attack would have come in a while ago for him. And so, Zion Pulsers are dealing a lot of damage to the units coming in. Zion Churchers are going to be able to hit the Fire Pods a little bit, but the Zion Pulsers are just going right past them because they can't hit the Fire Pods in the first place. So, Zion Pulsers instead are going straight for this Arcticus, dealing a huge amount of damage to the Arcticus. And Arctic Vanguard is running this Fire Pod away while it, just the Zion type units just come in and wreak havoc. Arctic Vanguard is about five seconds down from here, and. He is building up. He's building up more Sepi pods as well, and he doesn't have any cornboarding yet. He's not got a lot of resources for it. His Sepi pods are trying to take care of these units as they come in, but it's not dealing a lot of damage. And Elliot ends just double checking, make sure he's not attacking as ineffectively as could be. And actually, it looks like for Eli for back then, Elliot and Kingdom Six haven't been there conveniently. Elliot N is getting attacked by Far pods. His units are getting destroyed pretty quickly, and it looks like the Far pods. Yeah, they were sent back, so. Back in Elian's time, he has lost a lot of units, so the Zion type units, he actually hasn't, he's decided not to send them this time because he realizes the Far Pods, so he's undone the entire attack at this point. But he'll probably be attacking a bit later. He has a Shinveer as well to help detect, so he will be able to see the Far Pods coming in. But those Zion Churchers don't deal a whole lot of damage against air, so it's not going to be quite as cost effective as it could be. There is a Com Hub here. The Com Hub does see the attack coming in, so Elian knows that Arctic Vanguard is sending some fire pods around, but he doesn't have any way of detecting it. The comm hub is not a detector, it's just a really good vision provider, along with a communication structure, which is very handy in this game. While Arctic Vanguard is stuck at the right edge of the timeline, he doesn't front reporting yet, he has some fire pods being built up as well, so more fire pods coming in. Like I said, he's getting a lot of air units, he's very keen on getting air units up, and his fire pods and saving pods are right here, right near the island. He can really attack with them at any time he wants, but Elliot at this point, or I should say about a minute and a half down, is also defending. He's held off his attack. He's getting some Teth Pulsers and some Shin Beers so he can detect the Fire Pods and take care of them very effectively. So he has a very large army, mostly Zion Pulsers, some Zion Turchers, some Teth Church, some Teth Pulsers and Shin Beers. So he'll be able to detect, be able to fight air, be able. Actually, it's not necessarily a bad idea. It may not be quite as cost effective as using air units, but keeping a full ground anti air strategy, it's not necessarily a bad idea. So the Fire Pods haven't attacked him yet, and just double checking the Observer's point of view at this time. So, the Far Pods and Sepi Pods are coming in straight to the top. They aren't going over the lava yet. Okay, now they're going over the lava. So, two of the Sepi Pods are going down. The Far Pods and Sepi Pods, most of them are going through, the, going past the lava and down here onto the island. So, at this point, actually, it looks like all of Elidan's army will be able to just get passed freely into the base of Arctic Vanguard as soon as they move move around. It looks like, yeah, nothing's really happening further ahead. So, from Elidan's point of view, he actually isn't getting attacked very hard. He sees the Sepi Pods, and he's going to destroy them very quickly as they're going, escaping over the lava, and as it stands, Arctic Vanguard really could counterattack very strongly, and I don't know if that's causing Elliot to hesitate at all. It looks like he's trying to just look around, make sure there's nothing else is going on, because Arctic Vanguard is about the same time. He is, okay, now Arctic Vanguard is now coming in. He's got a lot of units coming in. Lots of, everyone's coming over the lava again, and is now dealing a huge amount of damage, so most of... Okay, now this is very powerful. The Teth Pulsers were in the back, so the Fire Pods are not going to be hit very hard. And the Shin Pulsers were all... Sorry, the Shin... Not the Shin Pulsers. The Zion Pulsers were all very heavily damaged. Most of them being destroyed, but a lot of them are actually getting through and should be able to deal some damage. Elliden, about five seconds down from that, he was able to actually pull the, Zion, the Teth Pulsers a bit more, but he's still dealing a lot of damage. He's losing a lot of his forces. So most of his army is being destroyed by Cloak Fire Pods. He can't detect them. His Shin Beers are... Not sure where exactly they are. He has a Zion Helicon coming as well, but he doesn't have any Shin Pulsers or anything to detect. So... He is not doing very well at all. He's jumped back about two two minutes, 
and it's probably going to double check to make sure he has everything set up for detection, but as it stands, he really doesn't have much. He's got specials left, he might be trying to do some nanite infection later on. While Arctic Vanguard, about two minutes up, is building chronoboarding, and he will be able to start chronoboarding some units back, so this will be getting very hairy for Elliot N if he doesn't start getting some air units to getting some really good counters for these guys, because as you can see, they can just hop over the lava and nothing can hit them. None of the ground units can get to the air units of Arctic Vanguard, so at this point, we see that Elliot N is not going to be doing very well in terms of countering. Looks like Arctic Vanguard is trying to hold out for an attack. He's going up to defend. This is the same defense we've seen before, and he's continuing to build units in his own base. Well, same time or slightly before, Elliot N is hanging out here, just double checking for defense because he doesn't know exactly what's going to be happening yet. There's a lot of stuff going on for him, and he's got to make sure that he does have the attack set up properly, because he's going to be losing a lot of units if he's not careful. He really needs to get the Shin Beers here up to the Firepods, and of course he doesn't know where the Firepods are, because they're cloaked, that's the whole point. You need detectors to figure out what the cloaked units are, but if you don't know where the cloaked units are, you don't know where to put the detectors. So the Shin Beers haven't moved up to attack yet to help out. And here's the Aerial Control Center, so finally an Aerial Control Center is coming up for Elliot N. While Arctic Vanguard has been quite comfortable with his air units, and from his point of view, about a minute up from there, he has almost gotten chronoporting, so he will be starting to chronoport units back. And he can easily chronoport a bunch of these firepods, semipods back to help out. And I'd be surprised if he didn't do that anytime soon. However, I should probably point out, obviously, Elliot N has actually got a pretty good resource advantage. This entire time, he had a Zion Beard coming up here and building a lot of resource processors in the middle of the map. While Arctic Vanguard does not have any expansions yet. Let's look around. He has his, okay, his natural expansion down here, but his main as natural, his main starting to get exhausted but he doesn't have anything in the middle of the map or in the top of the map, while Elliot N does have the top of the map. His center expansion, or his natural expansion has not been taken yet. The center expansion has been, I mean, the natural expansion would be useless at this point because the Firepaws are dealing a lot of damage. So Elliot N is trying to counter what was going on here with Arctic Vanguard, but Arctic Vanguard isn't even paying attention. He's a minute up from here and he's just double checking. For him, he's just sending some units back. So he has chronoported back some units. Looks like it's probably a couple of the Firepaws here. And he's checking around, and yes, he has seen the expansion, so he is going to start harassing the expansion very quickly. He's also jumped to the future to try to make sure he doesn't propagate the attack too much, because Elliot now knows, because Elliot can see just in the past this slight little attack right here. That's the attack, the harassment that just went on. So for Elliot he's maybe a little suspicious of Arctic Vanguard, but he probably doesn't know quite yet that chronoporting has happened. But Arctic Vanguard just double checking the attack, and yes, here it comes. So we have the Sepipod in here, and bunch of Firepods as well, so he is trying to go harass this expansion here, taking care of the Zion Beer here, to make sure the Zion Beer doesn't build any more resource processors, and now the harassment as well in the future, so jumping up about six minutes, or five minutes actually, and the harassment as well, five minutes in the future from where we were just, Elliot jumping back to double check to see what's going on, he sees that, he sees that the Zion Beer has been attacked very heavily and is being destroyed, and of course this is the unplayable pass, so we can't do anything about it, he's going to be needing to get some chronoporting very quickly, or gate tech very quickly to counter that, or really just in general get around that. But he does have the money to do it, he's going to be very, or very soon have the money to do it. In about, I'd say, 10 seconds or so, he should have the money to get chronoporting. I don't know if he's going to actually do it. And yes he is! Okay, so he has gay tech, and he's going to be able to get some revenge on this, but I really don't know how much, it's really going to come down to how much he can use with the money he has, because a lot of that money came from that Zion Beer, and since that Zion Beer is dead, once, I believe, this blue time wave propagates that change, it's going to be very powerful, and he's going to lose that gate tech. So he has gate tech upgrading, and he does have the... Yes, he has his expansion being destroyed, so this whole center expansion that he was relying on for his funds is going to be destroyed, and that's going to completely nullify gate tech. And I don't even think he's actually researched it yet. Looks like that research has been nullified, so... As it stands, Elliot does not actually have solid gate tech. Arctic Vanguard, on the other hand, has actually sent another unit back to the past. So he has armies going back to the past to two different times. So it looks like... And he's actually sending something else, too. So, Arctic Vanguard is really taking advantage of his chronoporting. And Elliot is going to be running into a lot of trouble when it comes to trying to counter all this stuff. Because he doesn't have chronoporting himself, and yes, here we are. So, a bunch of Firepods are coming back here to help out. And this attack has been made much more powerful by all these Firepods. Arctic Vanguard jumping to the future, just to double check. Or jumping to the present, I should say, just to double check. So, that's three minutes up. He hasn't built any more units here, though. He's not building anything yet. He's just looks like he's just double checking his attacks to make sure everything's going well, so he knows when to chronoport and where to chronoport. While Elliot N, on the other hand, Elliot N has not gotten gate tech. He doesn't have gate tech here. He, is. he has a bunch of infantry coming up. These are the Shin Beers that he had built prior, and he does see the Firepods. But of course, at this point, there's a lot more Firepods coming in. And actually, 
No, it's not. Okay, so I was I was thinking it might be Paradox, but no, it looks like it looks like that's pretty consistent. So Arctic Vanguard looks like he has a pretty consistent harassment on this, and he will be doing very well for himself. I was curious what the there are a couple observer scenes and stuff in the past, and it looks like actually if I go further back in the past, yes, on the green time wave. Actually, this is kind of odd. I think there may be a paradox. If I'm not mistaken, there might actually be a paradox going on here. I'm not sure exactly what happened. It looks like Arctic Vanguard may have messed himself up. Because on the green time wave, there's actually not as much damage as there could have been. It looks like, yes, Arctic Vanguard is not able to get through these forces. So, while Arctic Vanguard on the blue time wave has destroyed this base, on the green time wave, it actually hasn't been destroyed. I'm not sure. Did Elliot N check in his point of view? And Elliot N has not chronoported back, so either some units that were dealing some damage got through? Looks like he has some Teth Halcyons here. Those must have been helping out. Because, as we can see in the green time wave, it's going to come up and it's going to rewrite everything. Or has, actually. And no, it doesn't have the expansion. So maybe the expansion was destroyed earlier on. If we jump back... No, there's no... So no observers are looking at that right now. So it looks like Elliot did, in fact, lose the expansion. It looked like it was Paradox a little bit, but it turns out, no, it was not. So Arctic Vanguard still somewhat in the lead. But... This... But Elliot N is about three minutes down from him, and he does have a lot of Teth Halcyons, a very powerful anti-air unit. So, a little bit ahead of the present, we see that Arctic Vanguard is sending units all the way around. He doesn't have a lot of chronoporting going on yet, he has a lot of chronoporting that's in the Unplayable Pass now, so we've seen all the effects of that, but he doesn't have any units being chronoported back from the future. He's just taking out what he can from Elliot N's base in the future, but it's not doing too much. Well, Elliot N, of course, is three minutes down, so he's going to be doing a lot better at this point now. Playing in the past is slightly more advantageous, provided you have the Chrono Energy. Playing in the future is a great early game, but once you get later game, you really can't play too much in the future. There isn't much future to play in. So, unless Arctic Vanguard is using that to start chronoporting in his back, he really can't do too much. Elliot does not have to worry about it, because he's, as far as he can tell, he's dealing a lot of damage to Arctic Vanguard. Arctic Vanguard is dealing some damage to one of the foundations, but that's not being used to build anything. It's just being used to heal it up. Although, actually now losing two foundations, and Elliot N jumping back just to double check what's going on, it actually looks like... You know what? Arctic Vanguard did chronoport something back. So Arctic Vanguard has chronoported back some units, and we can see that only observers can see them. But yes, he has actually chronoported back some far pods. So these far pods have been chronoported back to help out, dealing a lot of damage to these RPs. But these RPs actually have been completely useless. Elliot has been running out of units for a long time. So or running out of RPs for a long time. He's actually not doing. Okay, Elliot is in a really tight spot. His attack is doing a lot of damage, so he has a lot of units, a lot of unit strength, but his resources are completely dead. His base is almost running out. His Teth Halcyon can't do a thing because it's getting attacked too hard. Arctic Vanguard slightly ahead of him. We see that he's, from Arctic Vanguard's point of view, the base of Elliot is completely destroyed, but his base is heavily threatened. He has a Chronoporter Farbod pack here to try to help out, but it's been completely destroyed. And as it stands, it looks like both players are going to go for a really heavy base trade, and at this point, it's going to be a matter of who can survive the longest after this base trade happens, but I don't know, I mean, there's still... <laughs> Elliot N is at a huge advantage. Arctic Vanguard has a lot of resources. He doesn't have a lot of units up. He, his triad is taking a fair amount of damage, but not enough to kill it. While at the same time, or about five seconds down, Elliot N is dealing a whole lot of damage, so Arctic Vanguard is losing his triads, he's losing everything he has, but he does have a lot of resources, so he can send back units. I mean, it will create a paradox, but hey, 50% chance of winning is better than none, right? So Arctic Vanguard, from the looks of it, has not started sending chronoported units back. He just has a bunch of far pods here. He's not chronoporting them back, which is really surprising. However, he did chronoport some units back, which is causing some changes in the timeline earlier on. And it looks like one of the observers is going to see it first, so he's going to jump back to... And here we are. So, on the blue time wave, it looks like there is a change going on to what is happening. Although, there's no one actually watching it right now. So, for Elliot N, he sees that his attack isn't doing as well. And yes, it looks like Arctic Vanguard has actually managed to get some units back here. So, Arctic Vanguard, as you see on the timeline, has actually managed to chronoport back units to get out of this situation. He's... Or maybe not. No, it looks like chronoport units are coming down here. I'm gonna call Paradox on this, because it looks to me that... The green time wave, we see this is Arctic Vanguard's point of view, the green time wave starting to take off some of the damage he's taken, whereas the blue time wave is dealing damage as well, so it looks like the green time wave is taking his death and the blue time wave is taking his saving, or salvation, so it looks like Arctic Vanguard is in a bit of a tight spot. He sent back some units again to try to help, yes, he's got some chronoported firepaws back here to try to help himself out, to help out destroy Elliot's base, but Elliot has managed to get... A bunch of units back here, so on the green time wave, Elliot N is doing quite well for himself. 
Although Arctic Vanguard has managed to start dealing some damage with this Chronoport, but it looks like that Chronoport actually got cancelled as well. So for Eliden, there is a lot of damage going on, and... Oh, here we are. So this Observer, this is the Observer about at the present, so Eliden dealing a lot of damage, and actually taking a lot of damage. So both players doing very poorly on this time wave, while on the green time wave, it looks like Eliden is doing much worse, or much better actually. He has his ACC, he has enough resources to at least rebuild an Annex, but a lot of Firepods are destroying his units. He has a lot of units in the center of the map, a lot of Shin Turchers, which is very good. He can detect all the Firepods and make sure that they aren't going to kill him. Arctic Vanguard, about 10 seconds down, or no, 30 seconds down from him, is going to be seeing that his forces have lived. So for Arctic Vanguard, he's actually in a very good position right now. Unfortunately for him, in the red time wave, it looks like a lot of those Chronoports actually got cancelled. looks like Eliden managed to completely counter those Chronoports, and as it stands, Eliden on the red time wave is actually being helped out a lot, so Eliden is going to be on the red time wave saved. So, like I said, this is a rather interesting paradox situation, I believe. I'm not sure exactly what happened. It looks like Arctic Vanguard managed a Chronoport, but then it got cancelled. Because we saw that there was a Chronoport here before, and it's gotten cancelled, so the red time wave is working out for Arctic Vanguard right now. But it's hard to tell. It looks like he may have sent back... Yeah, it looks like one of the, part of the Chronoports actually failed. So, Arctic Vanguard actually was taking a lot of damage, and I think... You know what I think happened? I think that he actually ended up losing that Seppi, and that loss of a Seppi meant that he wasn't able to progenerate any of those Firepods they sent back. And yeah, as we can see here, there aren't any Firepods back here, but down in the blue tabloid there are. So he's, progen he's sent back all these Firepods that have not been progenerated. So these Firepods are actually living on Burrowed Metatime right now. Well... Eliadan, further in the future, is going to be doing much better. So we see the re this is on the red time wave. Arctic Vanguard is in a very tight spot. You really should get the Seppi down here to start progenerating, help out, get some Pharopods. Although I don't know really what he can do. He really needs to get some Octus, get some RPs, because he doesn't have a whole lot of resources. He has these RPs up here, these seven RPs, and that's about it. Everything, Nothing else is mining right now. Everything else is completely idle. He has a bunch of Seppis come up as well, but that's not going to help too much. So it looks like the blue time wave is consistent somewhat for at least some of the Chronoports, but Arctic Vanguard is going to be a lot weaker on his attacks. Looks like this Chronoport... Yeah, these Chronoports have come in, but there isn't a whole lot going on with them, so Arctic Vanguard has managed to Chronoport back. Looks like he man did manage somehow to get a consistent setup for the Pharopods, but it's really hard to tell right now. Looking at Arctic Vanguard's, or Eliadent's point of view, from Eliadent's point of view, the green time wave is completely good for him, so that's good for him. He doesn't have anything really damaging going on, and for Arctic Vanguard, this is about 10 seconds down from the present. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have much of an army, but he's not being attacked very heavily either. So he really should get some Firepods up and start chrono putting them back again. But the green time wave looks like the Firepods are pretty consistent. So back, back further in the red time wave, this is down. By the green time wave, we see the Eliden's doing well. Further ahead, we see Eliden's doing well, and the green time wave is getting Eliden's salvation. So it looks like he actually did manage. To get rid of these firepods somewhat. And the red time wave down back here looks like it is. Oh, who is on that? There we go. So the red time wave is also pretty safe. So it looks like Eliadena is going to be coming out on top from here, but Arctic Vanguard might just send back some units again because he does have some consistent firepods, and those firepods will be able to keep him alive if he sends them back. So he has sent a couple more units back, and it looks like, yes, his units are coming in, dealing some damage. There, however, is a lot of damage coming in here. Some Seppi's coming in, taking out the Shin, one of the Shin Turchers, and yes, so back, the blue time wave has, like I said before, completely kept these Firepods alive, so we could actually chrono put these Firepods back, just completely dodge the time waves, but I'm not sure how well that's going to work. He really would have to spend a lot of Q-Plasma doing that, but it will at the same time possibly allow him to keep himself consistently alive. And here we are, so back further in the past, it looks like... Nothing's actually been chrono back too much. He did chrono something back, but he hasn't chrono back much. Just these two Seppies. While further in the future, near the present, he has... Like I said, the Farpods are still there, but the, once that green time wave comes with all this red, that's damage to him. So Eliadan has... is further down the past, so he's about five minutes down from the present. And he is in a fairly safe spot. I'm not sure exactly why he's paying attention to this so much. Nothing's happening here. What is happening is this attack here with the Teth Pulsers and Shin, Tur and Shin Beers was a Shin Turcher, but now it's been destroyed by the Seppies. So there's a lot of damage he's doing right now with his infantry, but he really needs a good proxy depot right now. Like just a foundation built around here-ish. One of the Shin Beers going back to build a foundation and then building a depot from there. It'd be really effective right by now. Looks like he does have... He did teleport his RPs down here, so he does have resources coming in. He will be able to have a consistent army, but it is going to be rather tricky. Doesn't look like anything is coming up in the past, though. Arctic Vanguard doesn't seem to be able to send much back. 
but he's been pretty tricky so far. However, it looks like on the green time, he does not have any consistent far pods, so Arctic Vanguard looks to be in a very tight spot right now. I don't see how he could possibly get out of this unless he managed somehow. It looks like in the past there was a Chronoport departure or arrival, and from what you can tell, it looks like there hasn't really been too much beyond that. Just a bunch of Seppies, though. Those Seppies have an effect against the air units, but no far pods, nothing really powerful coming in yet. So it looks like Arctic Vanguard is in a very tight spot and will not be able to deal too much damage. While, no, while at the same time, he is taking a lot of damage from Eliadan. Eliadan still does not have actually gate tech from the looks of it, or at least has not been used it. He has gate tech, he doesn't have any slip gates, so he can't really use it yet. But he does have enough units to deal a ton of damage. Arctic Vanguard going up about one minute and a half up from there. He sees all his damage coming in. Jumping up to the present, he's in more damage, so all these Shinveers have been dealing a lot of damage to his base, and looks like even from there, whatever damage he tried to deal, he cannot set anything up, so he does not have anything, nothing building up for far pods or just anything, really. He has a Faro, he has no Arcticus, he, he could turn this Faro into an Arcticus, and that's about it, but once this red time wave comes, that's going to be done, so he really has nothing, and now, now it's done. Okay, so it looks like... Arctic Vanguard is in a very tight spot. I really don't see how he could possibly get out of this. Just jumping to the blue time to double check. Looks like Elianen is also double checking, but nothing is coming up. The green time wave may propagate something. It looks like it's propagating more into Elianen's favor. So Elianen is going to be doing... Or is he? No, no. Elianen's attack got stopped back in the green time wave. So the green time wave is changing around what goes on there, but it looks like nothing huge is being changed. Elianen isn't bothering to check that. Overall... As you can see, the green time wave is starting to get its attack a bit more powerful. It looks like it's just changing where the attack hits and when it hits. But overall, nothing else is happening. So Arctic Vanguard, I'm not sure if he's trying to... He's still trying to chrome for back, I think, but I don't see how he's going to be able to get out of this. He's taking a lot more damage. That green time wave is propagating an even stronger attack to come up. And it looks like once it comes in, we'll see... Yeah, very powerful attack. So all the seppies that came in before are being destroyed very heavily. Back in the Red Time Wave, nothing has been propagated by the Red Time Wave, so really at this point, Arctic Vanguard, he has a bunch of Seppies to try to deal with this attack, which will be able to deal with it effectively, even though the attack did get in. Like I said, this this seems like a paradox situation. So the Red Time Wave looks like it's propagating a weaker attack, while the Green Time Wave is propagating a stronger attack. And at this point, the Blue Time Wave will be propagating the same thing as the Green Time Wave, and will set everything onto the Unplayable Pass, so, or the Immutable Pass, I should say. So, as far as can be told, Eliaden is going to be coming out on top of this very effectively, very soon. The blue time wave is going to be resolving this paradox quite effectively, and it looks like Eliaden will be just finishing off Arctic Vanguard's base completely. Arctic Vanguard, looks like there's some... There is some... Oh, wow, there's a couple domes. Arctic Vanguard, I can't believe I missed this. There's a couple domes that Arctic Vanguard set up in the base with the Octos, which will be damaging the RPs, but the thing is, Eliaden is not relying on Chronoporting to send his units back to get his units reinforced, so... While these RPs are being heavily damaged, the base of Arctic Vanguard's base is completely destroyed. So, as amusing as it is, that was a completely useless thing by Arctic Vanguard. Just funny, really funny. But no, unfortunately for him, it's completely useless for this. So, Arctic Vanguard, a very valiant effort, very good attempt to set up some paradoxes. But it looks like Elliot managed to get out on top. Very effective counter paradoxing, just very effective defense that he had set up in the first place. I'm a bit surprised. It looks like Arctic Vanguard may have made some mistakes, and that may be why the Chronoports didn't have it in the first place, because it didn't look like Elliot N had actually harassed any of his resources or harassed any of the Faropods, but it looks like there isn't much to be said beyond that. Just Arctic Vanguard seems to have made some mistakes, and that set up a lot of paradoxes. From there, Elliot N could just take advantage of it and completely finish it off. So Elliot N, very well done. And that appears to be the game. It's just Arctic Vanguard has GG'd and surrendered. So that was the game. Very interesting use of Chronoporting. Interesting attempt to save himself, but not quite. So I hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.